Listen to conversations with some of today's most innovative brands to hear practical advice and insight on technology, customer experience, co-creation, marketing, entrepreneurship, and more. Welcome to the Brand Lab series from AE Marketing Group. This week, Brian has an exclusive interview with Bosch's global IT innovation lead, Dennis Boker. So Dennis, thank you for being with us today and thank you for having us at the Connectory. Thank you for having me in your interview. Yeah, so let's, uh, let's start by just telling our audience a little bit about you and your role at Bosch. So I am the global um, IT innovation lead for Bosch and uh, that means that I'm driving the open innovation activities for Bosch um, from here, from the US, um, from the IT perspective. Um, and as part of it as well, being responsible here for the connectory. And uh, what we are trying to accomplish is to drive open innovation approaches in Bosch, driving the entrepreneurial mindset in the organization and connecting with the um, startup ecosystem and the ecosystem around um, open innovation, not only here in the connectory, but in general. Well, I know we're gonna talk a lot about innovation uh, coming up in just a bit, but uh, Bosch is a global iconic brand. It's been around since the 19th century. Uh, I have your products in my kitchen. I have your products in my garage. I've had your products in my cars. Talk about the evolution of Bosch. Yeah, so um, Bosch was founded in 1886 as a workshop for precision and mechanics and electrical uh, engineering. Um, and since then, we have grown to a company with almost 400,000 associates, um, which is kind of massive. And um, today we use our um, knowledge in sensors and software and services around our physical products um, and in cross-domain solutions. As you said already, um, you have your products in the kitchen, in the car, um, and you can extend that to industrial solutions where probably a private consumer would not see that so much. Um, what the specific is about Bosch is, is our ownership structure because 92% um, of, um, the, the, of Bosch is actually owned by a shareable, shareable um, foundation, um, which gives us um, a specific way of looking at things a little bit more long term than you would normally expect that um, from a, a stock traded company. Yeah, I think that's something really interesting that probably a lot of our audience wouldn't know about the brand. And as I was thinking about all the products of yours that I have, I thought there's probably a lot of places I go where I don't realize your products are. Uh, so obviously a big part of your role and a big part of Bosch's role is innovation. So what does innovation look like at Bosch? Yeah, so I would say you need to, to differentiate probably several things in innovation. One piece is really looking at all the products that, that we develop. We have a big research and development process where we spend almost 8% of our um, revenue into developing new products. And on top of that, we are driving open innovation and the outside in perspective is very important to us. And especially if you're looking at IoT now, we see more and more that um, we, we need to be keep pace with what's going on around us what the startups are doing, we see a lot of disruption in a lot of different branches and, and groups. So we need to embrace that and, and work together. And as well, we need to develop this entrepreneurial mindset in all of our associates, as well as working together with our partners um, in the ecosystems. So how much, of a, how much of a challenge is that to kind of, you said your, your, your global workforce is almost 400,000. So as you continue to evolve, and kind of build an entrepreneurial culture. How are you going about doing that? Yeah, so one piece you can see here in the connectory. So what we really try to build with the connectory and the physical space around here is to provide that kind of educational experience environment. So the one piece is really working together with our partners in the ecosystem. The other is really to bring our associates here and let them work and embrace um, the culture and the way of working together here in the connectory. Uh, on top of that, um, we have a lot of innovation programs where we teach our associates in um, open innovation, in um, lean innovation approaches, where we take them through business model canvas and other topics and acceleration programs internally so that they can really 
working on their ideas and at the same point in time learn about how to live up the entrepreneurial or entrepreneurial mindset in the organization. And for sure you will not reach 400,000 associates with that, but um, we will reach a critical mass of associates that are getting involved more and more in that topic. So it's very interesting how IoT is clearly, as you just said, transforming manufacturing. If we could, let's take it down to the level specifically to Bosch, because you guys are really a leader in this area as well. So talk a little bit about what Bosch is doing in the area of IoT. Yeah, Bosch has already seen great success in IoT um, over the last years. And uh, we have already sold 27 million devices um, that are web enabled in 2016. Um, by 2020, our target is that all our electronic products are connected to the internet and are service enabled there. Um, we launched our Bosch IoT Cloud last year and we have more than 5 million um, products and devices that are um, run and managed by our Bosch IoT suite. So you can see there's already a lot going on in Bosch and uh, we are working heavily in, in making that happen and with our target. Um, of connecting everything by 2020, um, you see that there is a strong push to all of our business units. Um, we bring um, an extensive knowledge to the table here, not only in our physical products, but as well in the connectivity that you see in the software and the services and in the sensors as well, because a tremendous part of the piece um, in IoT is that you have sensors that actually collect all the data that you need to do, for instance, in the manufacturing area, um, the predictive maintenance and other pieces um, without the sensors that would not be possible to do. So I know you have some of your IoT products even here in the connectory space, which I know we'll take a look at later, but is there a particular uh, feature or a particular product that excites you or that you would want to talk about in the area of IoT? Yeah, this, you know, there's some interesting pieces about it um, where you sometimes probably don't believe that we are actually doing things like that. And this is um, something around sustainable agriculture. And um, with our sensors and our technology in the Bosch IoT Cloud and the Bosch IoT Suite, we are um, pr providing help to an Australian startup, um, which is called the Yield, for oyster farming in Australia. And um, which is very interesting because, you know, a few years back, I would not have imagined that Bosch would actually be involved in such a area. But with the technology that we are providing and with the software and the services that we are having around, um, we have now developed user-friendly apps to create novel tools for the agriculture area and for the aquaculture, which is the oyster farming. And uh, we are um, a partner and an investor in that, in that startup, and uh, we manage the data, we manage the supplies of the technology, and we are collecting the data and recording it. So now even research is interested in getting those data to make some predictions on how oyster farming is developing. And what is even more, besides all the effects of collecting the data, what is interesting is really to be able to do the prediction and um, prevent diseases in very early stages, um, which helps productivity gains of 30% in that specific case. Well, I could see why that would be interesting. And I think it just shows how IoT is really changing everything and helping large global brands like yours and others really uh, evolve and find new uses of technology to solve problems that are not even just necessarily manufacturing related. Um, so that's a lot of exciting stuff. Is there something in particular that really uh, excites you about the future of IoT, either in your role at Bosch or as a consumer? Um, probably in, in both ways. I think um, what we see with IoT is that it is not only about the technology, but it, that's about the people. And if you're coming from it from a Bosch perspective, um, our slogan and our brand vision is invented for life. And I see that as well from my personal perspective. They say, you know, everything is getting kind of easier, is getting more personal, is getting more convenient, is getting more safe with IoT. And it's helping us to kind of um, strive in that area where everything is getting faster and um, probably more complicated and more complex on the one hand. But with IoT and all the help that we are getting, um, it's on the other hand, it's getting more convenient, it's getting more personal, 
and services are getting more designed for me as a person, which makes life just easier. And there's a lot of examples where that just happens. Um, and sometimes you don't even recognize that IoT is already involved in that piece of your life. So let me flip that around though. Uh, is there anything that makes you a little nervous about all this personalization, all this customization, this fast growing technology? Is there anything that, that has you as someone who has spent his career in IT and innovation and now IoT, is there, is there anything that has you a little concerned about what that future could also bring? You know, one topic that has been already around before IoT was really a bigger piece was security of our solutions and we were always concerned with, with data that in the, I would say in the past, we were mainly concerned about the data that we have within our company. Now, as with IoT, everything is kind of shared in the cloud, um, data security um, and what happens to my data is definitely one of the biggest topics. Um, I would probably not call it a concern, but it is definitely something that we need to always keep an eye on and where Bosch is heavily as well being involved in providing solutions that are always keeping that aspect um, under control so that on the one hand, you want to share the data and you need to share the data to get all the benefits. On the other hand, you want to know that your data is kind of in good hands um, so that um, there's no misuse with it. And I would say this is looking at what I can see from my perspective is probably the biggest, um, the biggest threat that I see um, that all this data is there, out there, um, and that we need to use it in a proper and appropriate manner. So the Connectory is all about co-creation and IoT, and Bosch has such deep roots as, as we've talked about in manufacturing. Can you talk a little bit about how IoT is really transforming the manufacturing industry? Yeah, I would say for um, manufacturing, it's really all about the closeliness of machines and people working together. I would say in the past that has not really been working together um, and now with IoT, with augmented reality and all the new features that we're having, machines and people are working closer together and with, for instance, predictive maintenance, we are able to drive that um, to a level that we are getting more efficient around uh, production and manufacturing as well. So we are driving that for our customers as well as we are driving that in our own uh, manufacturing facilities um, to increase workforce safety and increase efficiencies. So Dennis, thank you for sharing your wisdom on all things innovation, IoT. Appreciate all your insight on Bosch, all the incredible things you're doing, uh, both through co-creation, through innovation, as well as through IoT. So we really appreciate you being with us today, having us inside the Connectory, and look forward to seeing some of the great things Bosch will be doing in the near future. Thanks for having me, and it uh, was a pleasure to do the interview. I want to thank our listeners for joining us in the Brand Lab today and to invite you back next Tuesday as we continue our journey of today's most innovative brands as we learn how they empower employees, engage consumers, design products, and co-create experiences together. Until next time. To hear other episodes of the Brand Lab series, visit brandlabseries.com or visit iTunes, Google Play, iHeartRadio, or Stitcher. Follow us on Twitter at, at @brandlabseries. And if you have any questions or would like to participate in a future Brand Lab, email us at info@aemarketinggroup.com. At